Hello YouTube. I'm at my downstairs computer here where <laughs> I don't have a lot of room for stuff, but uh, my friend Chris, the coal cracker, gave me his uh, amplifier for his uh, Lowry organ. It's not working properly and uh, he says it gets real hot and it hums and stuff, so he replaced all the electrolytic capacitors in it, which he did a really good job. But unfortunately, that's not what's wrong with it. I'll show you that in a moment here. Let me set this down. There's, there's two... Let me move the camera over a little bit here. There's two audio output transistors in this device. They're made by Motorola. And... Uh, what I never liked about Motorola was the fact that when they made some of these parts, they put generic numbers on them, which you couldn't cross-reference to get a replacement part if you needed if you needed one. But uh, fortunately, I was able to look through uh, NTE online cross-reference, which was formerly the Sylvania ECG Corporation. And yeah, I did find a replacement for this transistor. This is a is an NPN Darlington power transistor. Uh, the number, let me see, I have it written over here. The cross reference for that is an NTE243. But the number on this part is just uh, 26039 002 which I said when I did a Google search on it, it basically came up with nothing. But uh, let's go over to the meter here. I'll show you what's wrong with it. If you can see that. I'm going to tip the camera down a little bit here. I'll zoom in maybe a little bit. Yeah, I'll show you what's wrong with it. If it's an NPN transistor, then uh, the collector, which is the case, would be positive, and the emitter would be negative. So if I just go, say, across the emitter and collector, as you can see, I'm getting a, a, a reading on the meter, which it should be an insulator right now because there's no bias on it. So also with an NPN, the base should be positive. So I connect the positive lead to the base of the transistor, and when I go to the collector, which is the case, yeah, that reads about normal, about around 10, 15 ohms. And when I go to the emitter, that actually reads normal too. That reads, Darlington's usually read about 40, 50 ohms or somewhere near there. But as I said, you know, when you go from the emitter to the collector, that's where the problem is it should be an insulator and it's not it's reading like about 25 ohms so yeah that's definitely a bad transistor no doubt about it yeah that's how you check a check a transistor with a with a meter uh, that's why I like analog meters they're great like for doing stuff like this you try this with a digital meter, you'll just be scratching your head. You'll be like, uh, "What can you try?" You'll be trying to interpret what you're reading because it just doesn't give you that. I don't know how to say it. Say it. Uh, that's why I prefer analog better because analog, you see, really see what's going on, you know, versus digital. I mean, digital's nice for measuring voltages and stuff like that. And checking, uh, pre pre you know, precise uh, resistance readings, of course. But yeah, you know, when you're doing like transistors and diodes and stuff, you definitely, you definitely want to have an analog meter to do that. Uh, so that's my little clip for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining my channel. We'll see you again. Have a good day. Bye bye.